Here we are, lesson four. So if you haven't already watched lessons one through three, then here I go holding you accountable again. Pause this video and do so now. And don't forget to download my private money matrix, my fact framework, and my 20 second power pitch template that I gave you before moving forward with lesson four. What we're going to get into now is your private money presentation. This is a part of steps two and three of my fact framework. And what you're going to do is take action by scheduling multiple 30 minute coffee talks with each of your private money lenders as you start to gather, create and customize all of your credibility pieces. So my private money presentation is just one credibility piece that I'm gonna give you that you can introduce to your private money lenders to start building rapport and trust, to build their confidence in you and your system, in you and your systems before you find your next deal. Do not worry about finding a house and locking up a deal before you start raising private money. You want to start raising capital and looking for your next deal at the same time. So make sure you download a copy of the presentation I have linked below and I am going to review what it looks like when I sit down with my private money lenders and take them through my private money presentation. Let's get started. All right, this is your private money presentation. This is a done for you credibility piece. It operates like a plug and play. All you're going to do, for example, is delete my logo that you see on the cover here and replace it with your own. If you'd like to rebrand it and use your own colors, great. You just click on it and change the colors accordingly. So what I'm going to do is take you through my private money presentation. This is one of many credibility pieces I have used, fine-tuned, and tested over the last eight years, which has been a very big contributor in my ability to raise over $16 million in private money. What you're going to do with this presentation is use it to simply open up the door to ongoing conversations that you will have with prospective private money lenders. Again, you're going to go through this. It's going to operate like a plug and play and you're going to customize it and make it your own. I'm going to break down exactly how you can do that as we go through the content. You can use this private money presentation to talk to private money lenders one-on-one, -on -one, um, whether it's in person via coffee talk, whether it's online via Zoom, Skype, or FaceTime. And as you continue to get out there and practice and raise private money for your real estate business, you can even present to groups of prospective private money lenders. You can get a bunch of realtors in a room. Um, you can practice on your friends and family members. And this is exactly what you will do. You're going to go through this deck and you're going to start to customize it. So your name will go at the top. And page two is basically just your bio. Be you, do you. This is not corporate America. This is not meant to be formal. Let your personality shine through. You do not have to have professional photos taken. Just now, eight years in, I had these photos taken. Before this, I was using my iPhone for images on all of my marketing and networking pieces. So on here, if you went to school, great. If you want to include it on this slide, feel free to do so. So I'll use myself as an example. I talk about getting my undergraduate degree from Michigan State University. And then again, picture and imagine I'm, I'm standing in front of one or a group of prospective private money lenders. I'm going to, these are just bullet points that you know, we're going to elaborate on. I'll, I'll glaze over um, my graduate school experience um, and I'll really highlight my main experience was with Dell computers. I was with Dell for 14 years. So for those of you um, who are doing this part-time and you've got another job, um, or even if you're doing it full-time and you used to work for someone else, great. That's a part of your journey. That's a part of your past. It's a part of who you are today. I would invite you to put that on here. So you can highlight some of your professional accomplishments and even certifications. Like I'll talk about how I'm Six Sigma certified. 
when I'm presenting to prospective private money lenders, it doesn't matter if it has nothing to do with real estate. And I will mention the fact that I began investing in 2012. I began trying to learn about it in 2012. So here you can highlight your coaching and mentorship experience. Um, and if you haven't had any previous coaching or mentorship prior to this training, great. Talk about this training. Now, you don't have to get into great detail. Keep it very high level. You know, I started investing in real estate earlier this year, for example, and I've been blessed to work with some amazing coaches and mentors. Um, you know, one of them has specifically you know, been featured on HGTV. She's completed over $40 million in transactions, right? So I am one of your coaches and mentors. I'm okay with you guys putting that out there. Now, don't say you've got me on speed dial and we're best friends, <laughs> unless we are. That may happen, right? But again, just glaze over it. Keep it super high level because yeah, we're working together right now. I consider myself one of your strategic business partners. So as you get out there and highlight these things, really think about what have you done in the past? Have you bought a house of your own and maybe you've renovated a bathroom? Hey, that counts. So you've got experience with one deal. Again, you don't have to say, oh, it was my primary residence. It wasn't technically an investment property. That doesn't matter. Then go on to share two numbers and a result. This is what's going to build credibility and confidence with your audience. So for me, and again, mine's going to look very different than some of yours. What I would say is yada, yada, yada. I've been investing in real estate over the last eight years. And during that time, I've raised over $16 million in private money. The result of that is every time I see an opportunity, I have the ability to say yes. So what are your two numbers and a result? Again, just do you and be you. Maybe it's I've been investing in real estate over the last year, and during that time, I've completed $100,000 in transactions, or I've completed two transactions, or I've completed one wholesale deal and one rehab. And if you've done nothing, it's fine. I have been investing in real estate over the last year or over the last few months, whatever it's been. And our goal, right? So don't talk about the past and how you've done nothing. Our goal is to complete three transactions over the next 12 months. So share two numbers and a result. And your result can be the same as mine. This is a private money presentation. It's one of many of your private money credibility pieces that you're going to create and design over time. So your result can be the same. The result of that is Every time I see opportunity, I have the ability to say yes. Once you know how to raise private money, this is true. That's what's going to happen. Now, for me, I'll mention, you know, I split my time between Chicago and San Diego. And, you know, I'm a wife and a proud mama to our daughter, Emma. And um, these are just personal things I like to share. Because remember, raising private money is rapport-based lending you're not going to raise private money in one presentation and one phone call. And you want your audience to get to know you. This is how you start to build rapport and trust. So highlight some of your personal interests or hobbies if you would like. Now we go on to share our business goals. Now this is a property that I renovated. So you can include a property that you've renovated. If you've never renovated a property before and you're interviewing general contractors or you've already got a contractor lined up for your first deal, then great. Include an example of a property your contractor has completed. Your contractor is an extension of you, right? So technically, you're just highlighting your team's experience. We are simply the business owners and entrepreneurs here. We are building our power team. So I'm not the one who did this work. I'm not telling my investors and private money lenders I did this work. No, it's my team that did it. My contractors had 25 years of experience. So on this page, let's highlight our business goals. You have a business plan. Great. What does that look like? If you don't have a formal business plan, it's not a big deal. I've never had one. You can just put a few bullet points like I've included here on your own. So to date, we have completed $40 million in transactions. Yours may look different than that. It could be more. It could be less. Just write down that number. And if it's zero here, it's, it's okay if you're new. 
or if your transactions are not where you want them to be. If you're new, then you can skip this bullet point. And if you've done even just one deal, say that. We've done one deal. Or it depends on the price point, right? If that one deal is in LA, then that's um, maybe a million dollar transactions. So depending on my market, I'd rather say in to date, I've completed a million dollars in transactions instead of saying just one deal. So you determine um, the scale of that one deal if you've done one, even if it's primary residence, and determine whether you're going to mention the number of deals or transactions or the dollar amount here. Again, if you don't want to do that because it makes you uncomfortable for whatever reason, that's fine. We are never going to lie or stretch the truth or be unethical. Everything we're going to, we are an open book. So if you don't want to walk that fine line and talk about the transactions that you've done on a personal primary residence, for example, fine. Just go straight into your goal. If this page just has one bullet point, which is your goal, great. That's your goal. Move on. So my goal is to complete 10 renovations over the next 12 months. I do not break down, you know, five renovations um, or 10 renovations plus three wholesales. I don't get into all of that when I'm talking to private money lenders. Now you can if you want to, right? This goes back to knowing your audience. I just keep it very high level. Our goal is to complete 10 renovations over the next 12 months. So what's your goal? Maybe your goal is to complete three renovations over the next 12 months. Write that down. If you are clear on your wholesaling and rehabbing goals, and if you would like to share that, great. Feel free to do so. If you mention wholesaling versus rehabbing, for example, just be sure to explain the difference between those two to your audience. If you're presenting to a bunch of seasoned investors or other real estate investors, for example, who you're also indirectly targeting for private money, you won't have to break that down. So again, just know your audience. And then look, especially if you're new and even if you're not new, we're always looking to hire new people, right? So here, add that to your business goal. The three things we never stop looking for in this industry, or at least the three things I never stop looking for, is private money lenders, realtors, and general contractors. You can never have enough private money lenders, investor-friendly realtors, and investor-friendly general contractors. As many of us know, good general contractors are very hard to find. So write that on here. If you're brand new, you still got to go out there and build your team so you're in the process of hiring. Notice how I mentioned we are in the process of hiring one acquisitions manager. Okay, so an acquisitions manager is just a fancy way of saying realtor. Or maybe you have a realtor and you really are hiring a separate position to fill an acquisitions management role. Somebody who's out there um, implementing various marketing systems for you. So you're going to have um, a true technical acquisitions manager and a realtor. Great, break that down. So that's the purpose of this slide. You're going to go through it, you're going to take your audience through your goals, and then you're going to highlight your team of experts. So I've given you my org chart template. These are my main cross-functional team members. So take this template, which you can download below, and just make it your own. So who is your acquisitions manager or realtor? Who is your designer? And again, you can just fill this in over time. You don't have to go fill this all out tomorrow. You're not going to have this team tomorrow. It took me 18 months of consistently networking and interviewing to build my power team. 18 months, okay? But even if only a few of these are filled out or none of them, still show your private money lender this org chart and let them know. These are my strategic key cross-functional team members who I pride myself on working with. You know, we always hire general contractors. We don't try to save a few cents here and there to do the work ourselves. That's not the highest and best use of our time. I always like to work with a real estate attorney. So, um, you know, we'll make sure that every deal that we purchase on and sit and sell will include our real estate attorney. Um, here's my insurance broker who always ensures that you 
are um, insured as a private money lender. So what that means is my insurance broker will make sure that you're added as a beneficiary to my builder's risk insurance policy. You know, maybe you're working with an architect if you're doing an addition or a basement excavation. Um, and a lot of you won't need an architect or even a designer. That's fine. You can delete those if you know in your market what you're doing over the next 12 months doesn't require an architect or a, des a designer. We're all, I would invite all of you to work with a stager. Um, research shows that homes listed with a realtor will sell much, much faster when they are staged. And then down here on the far left, I mention a listing agent. So for me, my listing agent is my realtor. And I have had realtors act as my listing agents and realtors act as my acquisitions manager. I've also broken out those two roles. I will have an acquisitions manager um, and then I'll have a listing agent who sells the property. So whatever your model looks like or you want it to look like, use this org chart to highlight your team of experts to your prospective private money lenders. Now you're going to get into what's in it for us. So why do we as real estate investors love working with private money, right? So really what you're doing here is you're highlighting all of the amazing things that you can do when you have the ability to leverage from other people's money versus working with a bank or even working with a hard money lender. I love my hard money lenders. There are a lot of investor friendly hard money lenders out there. It's it's quick access to cash. However, they don't fund 100%. They do care about your credit. They do verify your income. They do care about your experience. All that's going to affect your rates. So what I go on to explain is we love our private money lenders because access to private money allows us to put in cash offers. Hey, private money lender, this is going to make every offer we submit so much more competitive and increase our probability of putting a house under contract. Also, because we're making a cash offer, we have the ability to close much faster we don't have to wait on a bank for 30, 45, or yeah, even still 60 days in some cases. So when we have access to private money, not only do we put in cash offers, but hey, we can close in as little as two days if we want to. Okay, so these are, these are very, very competitive reasons for why we prefer to work with private money. And I go on to explain to the audience... Private money gives me the ability to access more properties. So again, on each one of these bullet points, you want to elaborate on it. So what that means, access to more properties, is you can buy a non-conforming property with private money. Non-conforming would be a property with mold, for example, or a property that does not have functional plumbing. Those are projects or those are properties a bank will not lend on. Those are called non-conforming. It doesn't matter with private money lenders, you can buy whatever you want, regardless of what the condition is. Again, assuming the deal makes sense, right? The deal's got to make sense. Um, and then I go on to talk about, hey, and then also the ability for me to access private money allows me to take on more than one to two projects at a time. And I explain why that is, you know, because I'm not having to come out of pocket for the gap funding. So now when I have access to unlimited private funds, I can do as many deals as I would like, assuming the deal makes sense and assuming I've got the bandwidth, right? Talk about that and the capacity within my team of experts that I just shared with you to take on more than one project at a time. So this is just me trying to help you understand what these bullet points mean. You can fine tune them and put them into your own words. And then another reason why we love our private money lenders is because it allows us to exponentially grow our passive income portfolio. So whether you're doing this part-time or full-time, whether you have another job or not, it doesn't matter. Once you know how to raise private money, if you see five amazing rental properties come across your desk tomorrow, if you have access to private money, and again, the deal makes sense, buy all five tomorrow. How is that positively going to impact your net cash flow? Is that going to get you five steps closer to retiring? 
So this is very, very valuable. This is very, very powerful. And as a result of all of these things, access to private money at the end of the day allows us to not only change our lifestyle and build our lifestyle by design and create our lifestyle by design, but allows us to help others do the same. So here's what I mean by that. We help others do the same. We help our private money lenders earn double-digit returns with a protected, secured, and insured asset. I'm going to break each of those down shortly. So that's why we, why our private money lenders love us. So in the previous slide, I talked about what's in it for us. Now I'm going to talk about what's in it for them, for our private money lenders. So you're going to break each one of these down when you're speaking one-on-one or presenting in a group of prospective private money lenders. You're going to talk about, hey, so this is what I do, you guys. I offer my private money lenders still double-digit returns. I offer them a 12% annualized return. That is a high ROI, a high return that most people, not all, but most people are not seeing in the stock market. They're not seeing it in their retirement accounts. They're not seeing it at a bank. More on that later. So our PMLs love us because we offer double-digit returns. Also, if you notice on the slide, I have bolded recorded mortgage, insurance certificate, and promissory note. If you want to write those three things down, those are the three main contracts that you will use to protect, secure, and insure your private money lenders. Okay, so our private money lenders love us because we are going to record a mortgage against the property with their name on it. This is their collateral. Raising private money, it's asset-based lending. As long as the deal makes sense and you know how to position yourself in front of a private money lender as a polished professional poised for aggressive growth, your experience eventually becomes irrelevant. The reason I say eventually is because, again, raising private money is rapport-based lending. This is not going to happen in one meeting. This is one of many credibility pieces you will use with the same private money lender over and over and over again. Each time you meet with that private money lender, you're going to introduce and share a new credibility piece. Okay, so not only do they get a recorded mortgage, which means you can't even sell the property without them signing off on it, but they also get listed as a beneficiary on your builder's risk insurance policy. So if there's a natural disaster, your insurance will pay them back. Do, do they get this in the stock market? I've yet to see any stock investment that I've made provide me with an insurance certificate, okay? Or a recorded mortgage. There's been no security or insurance. Do we get that at the bank? No. Another reason why our private money lenders love us is because most of the time, not all the time, there will be exceptions, we buy our homes below market value, right? So if fair market value is hundred grand, and we're paying $90,000 for the property, the minute we close on the purchase of that distressed property, we have built instant equity in the deal. We've just realize we haven't realized we've just um seen a projected profit you know of, of 10 grand if we were to just turn around and sell it right so we buy our homes below fair market value so what that means is the minute we close on the property bam we built instant equity into the deal also our private money lenders love us because we have fixed rates they don't have to worry about fluctuations like they do in the stock market or in the bank Right? It's fixed. My lenders know every single time they're going to get a 12% annualized return from me over and over and over again. And these are short-term notes. These are 12-month terms. So it's nice that they don't have to commit to an extended loan. And I also tell them, look, you can cash out whenever you want. Yes, the notes are going to be 12 months, but if you need to cash out for whatever reason, all I ask is that you give me a 30-day notice, right? That way I can find someone else to swap you out with. So they get short-term notes, 
and they get a promissory note. So a promissory note is just a summary of the terms and conditions of your agreement. So I, Amy Majuri, LLC, promises to pay back John Smith, LLC, you know, the borrowed amount of $100,000 in one lump sum, 12 months from the date of this executed promissory note, plus 12% annualized interest. Um, And the promissory note also says this property is secured, um, you know, The property located, this is also secured by a mortgage. Um, The address is 123 Main Street. And I also include in my promissory notes that I give my students, I include the, um, a renewal clause. It's, it's a $2,000 renewal clause. So it says if failure to pay this back within 12 months does not happen within 30 days of when the amount is due, then a $2,000 renewal clause goes into effect and then the promissory note renews for another 12 months. Keep that in there. Don't modify it if you want to. Again, these are things I've been using and testing and measuring over the last 12 months. So that's another reason why our private money lenders love us. They get short-term notes. They get a promissory note that's been notarized. And we're building long-term relationships. Over the last eight years, only two of my private money lenders have requested to cash out because they wanted to build their passive income portfolio. Once you get a private money lender to commit to you and you convert them into a private money lender, the probability, now there are no guarantees, but the probability of them reinvesting and reinvesting and reinvesting is likely. Also, remember the org chart I shared with you earlier? You're going to highlight your team of experts to your private money lender hey, look, I'm not, I don't know how to lay tile. I'm not going to go watch a YouTube video and figure it out. My contractors, my subcontractors and general contractors have been doing this for 25 years. You know, if you, I'd be more than happy to schedule a three-way call um, in order for him or her to introduce, you know, themselves to you and to build your confidence in our team. If you have any questions you'd like to ask them directly. Again, I am very raw, real, and direct. I operate like an open book and I make sure my private money lenders know that. All that's going to do is build their confidence in me and continue to build their confidence in my team of experts. And then I go on to tell my private money lenders, hey, As a private money lender, every month I'm going to send you an executive update. I'm going to send you progress photos. I'm going to share with you what's been completed, what's still pending. If we missed a timeline, then I'm going to share with you why that is and so on and so forth. So this is a lot of um, content security that your private money lender will receive as a result of working with you, that they're not going to get anywhere else. When we get out there and raise private money, we are offering and creating win-win situations. The only reason why more people in this country are not acting as private money lenders is because they're simply not educated on the process. They're not aware of it. They don't know what's in it for them. They don't understand the industry, and that's okay. It's our job as the polished professional, to get out there and educate them. So you're going to do that through this private money presentation. Here's a great example. A lot of our private money lenders are going to be more visual learners. So I like to show them this. And I tell them, (laughs) nothing irritates me more than walking into a bank and seeing their promotional signs in the lobby with balloons dangling off of it saying, Give us all your money and we'll give you, you know, 1%, best case scenario if we're lucky, 1% a year. I want to be like, really? Here's my business card. I will give you 12, right? So this is what banks have to offer. Why wouldn't they invest with us, right? Look at what the stock market's doing. Now, it's not always going down, right? I have made plenty of money in the stock market. I've also lost a lot of money in the stock market. Here, the stock market does not offer security, nor does the bank. The stock market does not offer insurance, nor does the bank. 
The stock market doesn't give you any protection through a notarized promissory note, nor does the bank. What do you think the bank's doing with our money? They're turning around and investing it just like we are, just like our private money lenders are, right? So what I like to do, people love banks. So I just tell them, hey, we act as the bank. And that's going to give them a level of comfort initially and confidence when they hear that. I, again, also tell them, there are no guarantees. I'm offering you a 12% annualized return, but worst case scenario, and I say this to them, and they respect me for it, worst case scenario, you have to be okay if you never see that $100,000 again. Right? I can't guarantee anything. However, private money lender, the probability of that happening is not likely for these reasons, da, 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 da. and I go through all the benefits we just talked about, right? So, hey, I can't guarantee you anything. I'm offering you a 12% annualized return. Every investment, as you know, there's a level of risk associated with it. But in this case, it's a calculated risk. We've got more control, right? Risk is related to control. We've got more control. And for these 10 reasons or eight reasons or whatever your, your five reasons are, the probability of, not, is, of that is not happening for these reasons. Now, you're going to come across some lenders who are going to say, tell me more. This sounds interesting. I would like to work with you, but like, okay, great. Everything you're saying sounds great, but how am I supposed to like fund your deals? What are all the different funding sources? So show them this slide. Hey, you got cash sitting around collecting dust? Great. You can use cash. Or if you have equity in your house, you can get a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. Some people already have a HELOC that they're not that they're not using. It's just sitting idle. And others have equity in their home and they don't have a HELOC. So tell them, "Hey, go get a HELOC. Go get, go get a home equity line of credit." You know, maybe the bank's going to charge you 6%. Let me pull from it and I'll pay you 12%. So they're making 6% for doing nothing. And they still get the protection, the security, and the insurance. There are various retirement accounts that people can leverage from. You know, there's a self-directed 401k account that people can lend and invest in real estate. So here's what I do. Because I'm not an expert when it comes to the different retirement accounts and what my private money lenders can and can't do, again, I will defer them to my team of experts. So I just have them reach out to my, basically my passive custodian, the custodian who manages my retirement accounts, and I'll set up a three-way call. Hey, you know, John Smith, meet Dave. I've been working with Dave for eight years. He's a passive custodian. Um, who can help you understand what you can and can't do in real estate with your retirement account. And no, most custodians are not going to charge for that kind of a phone call. If they do, that's not a custodian I want to associate myself with anyways. Um, so what's in it for them is, you know, if your private money lender chooses to invest with you through their retirement account, then your custodian can be their primary point of contact and help them you know, set up their account properly and that's how they'll get paid. Or they can use personal and business lines of credit. If they got lines of credit you can leverage from, similar to a HELOC, it's tied to their personal account or their business account, that's another option. Um, same with personal and business credit cards. Um, I've got a loan right now that I've lent to another investor on credit cards, on business credit cards, on Home Depot credit cards. So tell your private money lenders, hey, when you get these credit card statements in the mail, don't just throw them out. Open up the account and let me basically leverage from it. I'll make your monthly credit card payment fees, remember your monthly credit card payments, and then pay you out once the property sells, you know, X amount, whatever you're offering them. There are some life insurance policies that private money lenders can leverage from as well. This is also not a strength of mine. So the gentleman who set up my life insurance policy is my go-to 
team member. So if I have a private money lender who has a life insurance policy and they're wondering if they can use that policy to invest in real estate, I'll say that's a great question. Let me reach out to Stuart. I can introduce you to Stuart and we can run all these questions by him. Or if they want to set up a life insurance policy, hey, talk to Stuart. He can help you and make sure you're taken care of. You'll be in great hands. And I always make sure to not just make an email intro. I actually take the initiative to schedule a three-way call. And I am the middleman, the liaison. Because again, I'm going to sound like a broken record. Raising private money is report-based lending. So I want to make sure that Stuart, for example, and Dave, for example, are taking care and being responsive to my private money lender. And then lastly, if your private money lender has money tied up in the stock market, well, they can always liquidate. They can sell their stocks and reinvest it with you. So these are all the different funding sources that prospective private money lenders can leverage from when it comes to investing in real estate. Now, this is a very high-level workflow I like to share with my audience. I just tell them what I've been telling you. Hey, raising private money is rapport-based lending. It takes time for us to develop trust with one another. So just so you understand my process, private money lender, it starts by multiple phone calls, multiple meetings. I'm going to share all my credibility pieces with you. I'm going to show you how I analyze deals um, in order to further build your confidence in me and my team. And then over time, once you commit to working with me, what I'll do is I'm always putting offers out there. Once my offer is accepted, I can give you a call. I normally will do an email blast and reach out to all of my private money lenders. And I usually just go with whoever responds first. So let me know the best way to get a hold of you, whether that's you know an email or a phone call. And that's going to generate some sort of urgency, you know, letting them know that, you know, I've got so many private money lenders lined up that I will do an email blast and I'll call my top five. So, um, and this is something you say eventually, right? Not on your first meeting. So, um, you'll get into these de details later. I keep it very high level in this presentation. Um, you know, so let me know, you know, if you're serious about moving forward. So then you'll identify your private money lender. You'll go ahead and you'll complete the loan documents on behalf of your private money lender. So that's what I tell them. I say, hey, I've got all the contracts. I'll complete the contracts and the loan documents for you on your behalf. And all you need to do is just review and sign them. Hey, private money lender, if you want to have a real estate attorney review them, great. I will cover that cost. Okay, so once that's done and the paperwork is in place, obviously prior to closing, your private money lender will wire the funds, the agreed to funds, to the title company, the third party neutral representative. There will be an escrow account that you will open up at that title company. And yes, you're going to pay for that, okay? Then you'll close on the purchase of your distressed property. You'll start the renovation, right? Your general contractor will start it. He or she will do an amazing job. The renovation will be completed. The property will get listed with your realtor, right? We're not going to do it for sale by owner. We work with realtors because that's what they're good at, right? Our job as the real estate investor is to find the next deal and raise money. Find the next deal and raise money. So once your property is listed and it's under contract, you're going to close on the sale of that renovated home, and your private money lender is listed on the HUD statement. So what's going to happen is at closing, or within 24 hours of closing, the title company will wire the funds, the principal plus interest, back to your private money lender. And then if they want to reinvest, which most of the time they will, then great. You start the process all over again. I always end my presentations to prospective private money lenders with these two guidelines. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we don't guarantee our return because we understand that all um, investments have an element of risk associated to it, but it's also an SEC guideline. So even if I wanted to guarantee it, I legally cannot. And we do not pool investor funds. This is very important. We do not pool investor funds. That is also an SEC guideline and regulation. So what that means is, yes, 
You can have more than one private money lender on a loan. That's okay. If you do that, you just want to make sure that each of your private money lenders have their own separate set of loan documents and they each have a separate lien position. So if you have two private money lenders on a deal, there will be a first lien position holder and a second lien position holder. I've had three private money lenders on a deal. So I'll have, I'll have a first, second, and third lien position holder. So this is how I end my private money presentation. And then I just say, hey, here's how you can reach me. I'd love to stay connected. If you see the value in learning more, right? So I'm not going to say if you see the value in like pulling the trigger and working with me. But if you see the value in learning more, I'd love to schedule another meeting with you to take you through, you know, my private money power packet um, or to take you through all the contracts that I use to protect, secure, and assure my private money lender or, you know, to take you through whatever credibility piece you want to share with them. So I ended on this and um, just make sure that you have all of your contact info updated on each of these sites and you're sharing that with that with your network. All right. So this is your private money presentation. Use it, customize it if you would like, fine tune it, make it your own, make it in your own voice, practice it, and then use this to just open up the door in conversation to ongoing meetings with prospective private money lenders. How much better is this than a piece of paper and a pen, right? Visual aids paint the picture and a picture is worth a thousand words. This is what separates us from investors who simply talk about raising capital versus those who are ready to take action and raise endless amounts of capital for every opportunity they want to capitalize on. So if you see the value in having my help moving forward and you're enjoying my systems and my scripts and my strategies, I'm still offering you an opportunity to hop on a one-on-one -on -one call with me by clicking on the link below. I look forward to chatting with you and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the Rent to Retirement YouTube channel. Check out some of our other videos, like this one, or this one here.